Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, come on. It's Resurrection Sunday. Come on, come on. Put your blessed hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, come on. This, this is why we serve the Lord, because he is a risen saint. I don't know about you. I get excited for every Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Because when he got up, I got up with him. When he got up and defeated the enemy, because I'm in him, the devil's under my feet. So you got to set your expectation for a resurrection blessing on this morning. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on and give the Lord some honor. Come on and give the Lord some glory. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, children of God. Good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose right now to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them all. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we shall remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. I've been young and I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed breaking bread. Come on, come on. Give God a resurrection hand clap. He got up with all power in his hand. He did. He got up with all power in his hand. Good morning, everybody. We welcome you to our Resurrection Sunday worship experience we thank you for tuning in we thank god for those who are here in the sanctuary you did not come or tune in by coincidence god has something in store for you so today on this resurrection sunday make sure you like love share and comment on the broadcast what you share may save somebody's life hallelujah father in the name of jesus we give you all praise we give you all honor and glory we thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for allowing us to assemble in your name. God, we thank you that on this Resurrection Sunday, he got up with all power in his hand. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us over 2,000 years ago. It's because of you that we have hope. It's because of you that we are reunited with the Father. So, God, we thank you and praise you this morning that you will send your word. Hallelujah. You will send your anointing. We ask you not just to stop by. We ask you to tabernacle with us. We give you free reign in this service today. Be glorified in us and through us in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I bind sorcery in the name of Jesus. I bind voodoo in the name of Jesus. I bind soothsaying in the name of Jesus. I bind any and everything that will hinder your children from going to another level. I bind any and everything that will hinder your people from hearing a noun word from God. God, we give you praise right now. We, we give you glory, God. We ask you to arise in this place. Arise in this place, God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, worship the Lord. Come on, Roshake Mamosi. Roshanike Mosi Kilama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We love you and we thank you, God. We we honor you and we worship you. Hallelujah. We dedicate this service to you for you to do what only you can do, God. Healed, deliver, and set free. In Jesus' name, amen. I have the honor and privilege of introducing the, 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 the finest, the most anointed first lady on this side of heaven, our executive pastor who leads us into worship all the time, my beautiful wife, Pastor Oleanta Stanfield. God bless you as she comes Hallelujah. to her own Hallelujah. Praise anointing. the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. He's powerful. He got up. Hey. We serve a risen Savior. Hey, he lives in you. He lives in me. That's something to get excited about, that we have life and that we have it more abundantly. That we have life and have it more abundantly. Y'all just clap your hands like that. Woo! Hey! Woo! I see you say 
dela. Above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all Above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonder the world is ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. Baby. 
on, let's praise the name of Jesus. Come on and give God some praise if you at home. Come on, y'all, just praise ye the name of the Lord. God is the mender of the brokenhearted. He's a lover of our souls. He's been there for you and for me. We are here by the divine grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, you won the victory. You have victory over sin. You have victory over death because you got up for us. And God, we just worship you for today. <laughs> oh, God, we give you, God, the highest praise and the highest praises. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. For you won the victory. You won the victory, God. You won the victory. You have all power. You got up with all power. In your hand, God, you got up with all power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and begin to worship God as the musicians begin to play. That God has won it all for you and for me. We have victory. We have victory over every situation, over every circumstance. You have victory. Because of the divine power of God that lives on the inside of you. That resurrection power that gave, broke up Christ is rising up within you. The power of God is rising up on the inside of you. Because you have been to me. Yes, God. Yeah, 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 yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, give God a yes. Say, God, I yes. I give you a yes, God. A yes and an amen, God. A yes and an amen, God. But we have victory. No matter what we face, you are a winner. You are a winner. Ah. 
Hashaya Maharo. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have won it all for me. That's personal. You have won it all for me. <laughs> you have won it all for me. <laughs> You did it for me, God. He did it for you. Just focus on that. Don't focus on the haters. Don't focus on nobody. Don't focus. He got up for you. He got up for you and me. Oh, hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you. But you are the risen king. Do you know that? I hope you believe. He's seated in majesty. Oh, you are, you are the risen king. And you are a way maker. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. I worship you. This person, y'all say that. Say, I worship. I worship you. <laughs> oh, you are here. <laughs> He's working in our midst. <laughs> I worship you. <laughs> yes, God. I worship. Pain in the midst of my hurt, you are. 
y'all know that's personal. I worship. If you only knew what I've been through, that's why I can still smile through it all. Cause a way maker, come on, take it up. Way maker, way maker, you way maker. I know you've been through some things, and it's been a way maker. He's been a way maker. You've been a way maker. He's making a way out of nowhere. He's making a way out of nowhere. He's meeting every need. According, it's according to God's riches and glory. Because hey. you are a way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. And I'm not sure. Light in the darkness, my God. God, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. That is who you are. I'm in awe of your presence, God. He inhabits the praises. He inhabits the worship. He inhabits the praises. You're his people. You don't belong to me. You don't belong to Bishop. You belong to God. You're God. We're God. We all belong to you. We yield everything to you. Stay in worship this morning. Oh, shit came out, my, 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 way maker, miracle worker, hallelujah, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, shit came out, my, 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 my. Come on, come on. We pray for the glory. We've been on a church fast all week for the glory. The glory. I see the glory descending. The glory. No matter where you are, hallelujah, the glory, the glory is descending. Way maker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. He's a way maker. He's light in the darkness. He's not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. He we love you, God. We worship you, God. Come on and bask in his glory, his glory. We've been fasting all week for his glory. We're on another level, Impact Church, the glory. 
This is a second Chronicles chapter 5. It's the glory. And you know when this glory descends, needs are met. Guess what's yours? Those who are watching, those get what's yours, the glory of God. Reach up and just grab your breakthrough, grab your healing. Grab what you've been expecting. The glory of God. The glory. So you can't fast and consecrate yourself before God and not get a reaction from the kingdom. I said you can't fast, pray, and consecrate yourself before God and not get a reaction from the kingdom. Because he's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's light in the darkness. Do y'all make it personal? He's, he's my God. He was my God when my back was up against the wall. He's my God when everybody gave up on me. My God when I'm staring down a barrel of a gun. My God, when I'm laying on a hospital, he's a promise keeper. Ye karomosi, way maker. When things look as dark as he's going to shine his light. Because his word is a lamp to my feet. A light unto my roshakabababaromosi. I, I, see, I see the holy angels in the spirit realm. Roshakabababaromosi. They are arresting principalities. They are arresting familiar spirits that's been holding us back because we saw this glory. There's a freedom in here today. I said there's a freedom in here today because we saw this glory. This is what resurrection. See, each Sunday should be a celebration of the resurrection. I, not just this day that we celebrated, but the early church. Uh, the reason why they switched to Sundays from Saturdays, because the day that he got up, amen, they wanted to commemorate that every time they got together. Every time they got together on Sunday morning, they were expecting a resurrection experience. I know my seven-day Adventists will have a problem with that, but that's on them. The Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath. Every day is a Sabbath. Hallelujah. Because we rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But the early church, somebody say the first century church, they switched worship from Saturdays to Sundays in commemoration of the resurrection. Because he got up the first day of the week. So we say this the end of the week. This is the first day of the week. And that's why the enemy don't like you coming to church. Because when you set the standard the first day of the week, you're letting the enemy know I'm going to live in victorious the rest of these days of this week. Regardless of what's facing me because I serve a risen Savior. I will not be stopped. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Happy, happy resurrection Sunday. Happy resurrection. I'm so glad he got up. See, this is not cliche to me. I know he got up. I have experienced. I'm, I'm personal. I'm testifying. Per I know he got up. September 21st, 1993, when I was deserving of death. My mama prayed for me. My sister and brother-in-law prayed for me. My church prayed for me. Two masked men showed up at my house, wanted to kill me. The devil wanted to take me out because he knew this day was coming. And after I was shot up in both legs, I seen angels. The guys kept pulling the trigger. And I seen swords of flaming fire ricocheting those bullets so they couldn't take my life. I heard the Lord say, I'm going to turn your life around. I'm going to use you for my glory. And I, I seen a light come down. Can't nobody tell me we don't serve a risen Savior. I'm not up here preaching just to preach. I preach because I know he's real. I know what he done in my life. And while religion and man has muddied things, you don't throw out the baby with the dirty bath water. Come on, somebody. And so this is a 
special resurrection for us. And we've been seeking his glory and his glory. That's right, baby. In the mouths of babes and sucklings, he has ordained praise. They can see what we can't. They're still an innocent. They can see what we can't. Hallelujah. It's offering time in the house of the Lord, y'all. Four ways to give. Give your very best. Sow a resurrection seed today. Y'all know I don't do all that, but sow a resurrection seed today. Amen. Four ways to give on your screen. If you need an envelope, Sister Cheyenne will hand them out to you. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So get to this word. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that the offering is blessed. God received the offering this morning, the tithe and the offering is a sweet smell into your nostrils. May it release a sweet fragrance in your nostrils. And we thank you, God, you'll be faithful to your word to do what you said. You will rebuke the devourer and open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. And we thank you, God, that when we give above our offering, that it puts us in overflow. Somebody say, I want overflow in my life. Well, we got to participate in God's principles. Amen. He says when we bring the offering cheerfully, and the offering is above your time, that he'll cause men to give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So we thank you that the offering is consecrated and blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, all the children of God agreed, said amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you would make preaching and teaching easy in this moment. Allow your anointing to ride the back of every word that will proceed out of my mouth, that it will not only encourage us, it will change us forever. I thank you, God, that you would dip me down into your word of wisdom. Hallelujah. That I'll come up wet declaring your gospel as never before. I bind every spirit of distraction in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that because your people are going to hear the word of faith today, their lives will be forever transformed. In Jesus' name, all the children of God that agreed said, amen, amen, amen. Good morning to our online viewers. Amen. I, I see the praise emojis and the amens in the chat. Amen. It's Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And I'm an audience participation preacher. So I like when I look down in the chat and in the sanctuary, we act on a fool for God. It's all right to cut up for God, y'all. Sometimes you can't help but cut up for God when you really think about it. Amen. Come on, let's go, y'all. If I can lift up a theme topic title this morning, it would be the importance of the resurrection. The importance of the resurrection. Amen. I'm good, son. I'm good now. Hallelujah. The importance of the resurrection. Amen. Uh, this day is the most defining day in human history. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Is it all right if I teach a little bit this morning? Hallelujah. Understanding the importance of something is how we value or rate its significance in our lives. The things we deem as important and significant are the things we pay careful attention to as these are the things that impact and direct our lives. We're talking about the importance of the resurrection. Hallelujah. We have had good and inspirational preaching about the resurrection. But I believe we need to more carefully, we need to more clarify it pertaining to its significance and in how the resurrection impacts our earthly existence. 
Hallelujah. You know, the ding things that we deem significance. Significance are the things we deem important. The things we deem significant and important are the very things that we seek understanding of. They are the things that direct our lives. Hallelujah. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is Romans 10, 17. And in all thy getting, the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 7, get a understanding. Think, I need an understanding pertaining to how the resurrection impacts my everyday life, how it impacts my earthly existence. Remember now I said that this is the most defining day in human history. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead has been a controversial subject for centuries. I learned in my seminary, my the theological schools, that they often baited the deity of Christ at the universities over in Europe. That's where we get scholasticism from where we want to try to reason, amen, spiritual things down to a human understanding. How I many know we can't do that? We can try, but we will fail because God said, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is a faith walk. And we walk by faith, not by sight. So our relationship with God has nothing to do with our human reasoning. And I'm going God want us to meditate on his word, amen, but we ought to meditate on his word so that we can understand more about God. But throughout the centuries, there's been great debate about Jesus, the, the person of Jesus, the deity of Jesus. Did he actually raise up from the dead? But thank God for history and research that have proven that he did live and walk this earth and that he did rise from the dead. And so the things that we deem significant and important all the very things that direct our lives and impact our lives. So we're going to see and hear from the word of God today pertaining to the resurrection and how it impacts our daily lives, how it impacts our significance so we can have an understanding, amen, of how it really impacts our lives, amen. And so we need an understanding of this significance according to the word, amen. And when you deem something significant, understand its impact on your life, it affects your motivation. Somebody say it affects my motivation. It affects how you respond to life's problems. It affects your self-esteem. It, it affects your attitude. It affects your outlook. It affects what you value. Amen. What what? When, when you deem something significant, understand its impact in your life, it affects what you move towards. It affects how you respond to others. If you can go with me this morning to Romans chapter 1. Uh, Romans chapter 1, we're going to be looking, reading real quick. We're going to go to a couple of scriptures this morning. I promise you I won't be long, but we'll be very impactful. Romans chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 3 and 4, it says, Good news about his son in, in his earthly life. He was born unto King David's family line. Hallelujah. And he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's going to need your help. Hallelujah. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. The good news about his son, in his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line. He was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So this morning, it is important for us to understand the resurrection amounts to the Father's clear signal that Jesus is the powerful son of God, who has conquered death and reigns as Lord over all. The resurrection demonstrates that Jesus' blood of the new, uh, Jesus blood of the new covenant saves his people from their sins. Amen. This is why the devil don't like us preaching about the resurrection. Amen. Because when we truly believe and understand that he was 
raised up from the dead for our justification that that God received his sacrifice amen that God accepted amen his sacrifice in the head it changes our earthly existence the resurrection of Christ is evidence we have been made right with God somebody say this one I've been made right with God Amen. You've been made right with God. Many of us think we can't approach God because of past sins, mistakes, and failures. Amen. No, 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 no. That was nailed to the cross. Jesus shed his blood. And when he got up um, on that early Sunday morning, that was justification that we've been forgiven of all past, future, and present sin. Now, I'm not saying that we have a license to sin. But when you do sin, just ask for forgiveness. Repent. Brush your shoulders off and keep on moving. The fact is God loves you. You've been reconciled back to God. And some of us are still in the place that we are. It's because we think we're not worthy to come to God. I know the enemy been speaking to some of y'all. Telling you you're not worthy. You didn't messed up. That the devil is a liar. Jesus paid a price for you. He went to hell for you. Amen. Then he rose up from the dead. Presented his blood in the heavenlies of heavenlies. And God received the sacrifice. Sacrifice. Then he sat down at the right hand of God. So when you mess up and you begin to call on Jesus, when God looks to the right, he's looking at you through the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm somebody in God. I, I've been forgiven of all my past, present, and future sins. Uh, you better stop letting the devil hold you back uh, because you think you're unworthy to come to God. Jesus paid a price. Amen. The resurrection of Christ is evidence. Somebody says it's evidence. We have been made right with God. And the devil doesn't like it. He don't like it because when he fell short and rebelled against God, there's no forgiveness for him. Amen. But when mankind fell short, God had a plan to redeem us back to himself. And I'm so glad that Jesus came through 40 and two generations of his bloodline and manifested on the earth, walked this earth, showed us how to master our human existence, uh, and then paid a price for you and me that we could never pay for ourselves. There are many people walking around feeling and insignificant and unworthy because they don't have a true understanding uh, of what God did for them. I don't know who I'm talking to watching online. Those in the sanctuary, you are somebody. God loves you. You've been redeemed back to God. Amen. And the resurrection of Christ is evidence that we have been made right with God. Romans 4.25 says, look, he was handed over to die because of our sins he was handed over to die because of our sins and he was raised to life to make us right with God somebody say if I'm a child of God I'm right with God if it, I, I know I might have messed up yesterday I might have messed up last week I didn't repent of that come on it's covered in the blood I'm still right with God it's the devil trying to make you think you done messed up to the point that your life, your future is done with the devil is alive. Your best is still in front of you, not behind you, because Jesus made us right. Somebody say, because he raised up from the dead, I've been made right with God. Hallelujah. He was raised to life to make us right with God. Why there's so much argument. You can go into schools and pray in any other name, but when you mention that name of Jesus... The government, everybody comes after you because at this particular time, this government ain't on his shoulders. But when we bring his government to the earth, the kingdom of God, that government will be on his shoulders. This government now is under a different influence. You, you, you got uh, uh, bishops going to the Congress is playing in his son's name. And we can pray in the name of Muhammad. We can pray in the name of, but as soon as we start praying in the name of Jesus, all hell breaks loose. Because the devil knows he's a risen savior. And if mankind can conceptualize the love of God demonstrated towards us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it will positively impact our earthly existence. Then he had to shed his blood. He had to shed his blood. We know in the old covenant, amen, all the sacrifice of the rams and the goats and all those things was a foreshadow of what was to come in Christ. He shed his blood once for us. And God received it, evidence of him being raised from the dead. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there remains or there is no forgiveness of sins. Somebody say, I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. 
Praise the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus opened the possibility of eternal life with God for all people. Hallelujah. Death is not something to be feared. It is a getaway into a new and richer life. This is why when a loved one dies, we don't grieve like others who have no hope or no assurance because, because we know that Jesus not only died, he rose again. See, see, th th this understanding impacts your life in such a way that you don't fear what others fear. Okay, all right, all right. See, when, when you understand the resurrection, right, when you understand how it impacts your life, it, it, it changes your existence because now you're looking at things through the lens that I serve a risen Savior who's not dead but alive, and he said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I'm not afraid of anything because I walk with God, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So for me to live is Christ, amen, for me to die is gain. I don't fear what others fear because I walk with God. Don't matter what the stock market doing. Don't matter if a world, a new nuclear war breaks out I walk with God amen I don't have to fear because Jesus said when is my time I've already gone before you to prepare a mansion for you you don't have to worry the transition is seamlessly because hey to be absent from the body you're right in my presence you don't have to fear take it I don't have to fear I don't I don't have to fear Someone's afraid to step out of boat the boat and go pursue your dreams because you are afraid of failure at least Peter got out the boat and walked on the water. And when he began to sink, God was still there to pick him up. And they walked back on the water to the boat. I need some people in this season to say, you know what? Because I serve a risen Savior. I'm getting out of the boat of mediocrity. I'm getting out of the boat of procrastination. I'm getting out of the boat of fear. I'm not going to let what's going on in the world stop me. Because my Lord and Savior is alive. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake me. Hallelujah. That's right. I'm getting out the boat. I, I'm getting out the boat. See, we have to realize, y'all, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us. Let me, let me say that again. Let me say that again. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives on the inside of you. In other words, Christ, the hope of glory, lives on the inside of you. And because of this, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Why? Because he's alive. He's in me. His power is in me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his home. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to give God praise right there that I can do all things through Christ because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is on the, in other words, your living Savior lives on the inside of you, empowering you to do the great things he purpose you to do in the earth ah, praise the Lord I, and, and see I like the apostle Paul we almost done y'all told y'all I wasn't going to be long this morning I'm almost ready to take my seat amen you, you know and, and because it's important for us to understand it we, we're going to preach on the third day you know we're going to <laughs> death couldn't hold them <laughs> so people feel good but they leave church with no understanding the epistles give us great understanding of how it impacts our lives because when Paul was Saul, the risen Savior appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And after he appeared to him and told Paul, I'm going to use you greatly, but you're going to suffer many things. He changed his name from Saul to Paul and everything Paul received, he see, received by direct revelation. So when you read the, the epistles, uh, you get an understanding of the resurrection of how, and how it impacts your daily existence. I told you early on in this message that the first century church uh, they switched from Saturday to Sunday mornings in, in commemoration of the resurrection because they wanted to live that in their daily lives. They wanted to be reminded of what Jesus done for them and the power that they now possess and the inheritance that they now possess. Being a child of God evidenced that Jesus was raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of God. Okay, okay. Let's look at this. So, so, so when you understand the power of the resurrection and its significance in your life, you understand that nothing can separate me from God's love. Come on, come on with me to Romans. Come on with me to Romans 8. 
and 31. It's going to be a little bit of reading, but let the scripture speak to you. Amen. When you see the apostle Paul understood the importance of the resurrection and how it impacted his life. Amen. And he taught the churches. Amen. The same. So he says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then, who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Somebody say, God is Jesus at the right hand of God, pleading for me. Hallelujah. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? or are persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death. As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, come on, nor demons, Neither our fears for today nor worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I, I don't know about you. See, see, see. Paul understood the power of the resurrection and, and its importance in his life and, and how it impacted his life. So Paul said, I don't walk around like everybody else. I, I know God is on the inside of me. And what Paul is really saying, it don't matter what this world throws my way. I'm not giving into the philosophy of the world. I'm not giving into what the devil's doing because my God is alive and he's on the inside of me. And I know that all things are working together for my good. And everything that Christ went through for me, he paid a price for me. Nothing can separate me from his love. So with that understanding, I can get up every day with a new swag. I can get up every day with a new comfort confidence because I know God is with me. I know God is for me. I know God is ordering my steps. Somebody say God is ordering my steps. He never said this world would be a, a, a bed of roses. He said in this world you have some tribulation but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And how can we be of good cheer because we know we serve a risen Savior. How can we be of good cheer? He know he'll never leave us nor forsake us. How can we be of good cheer? Because he said overwhelming victory is how when we understand the power of our risen Savior, overwhelming victory is ours. When we refuse to throw in the towel, because we know we serve a risen Savior seated at the right hand of God. The devil don't like this kind of preaching. When we preach the cross in the risen Savior, there's something that rises up in our spirit that lets us know we're beloved, that lets us know that we're somebody. That lets us know how I can make it how I can take it how because my God the risen Savior the lily in the valley the bright and morning star the palm in Gilead they call him Jesus the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the one with all power the Lord of hosts is his name somebody say Jesus See, see, see the, the re understanding the power of the resurrection is important because it gives us a living hope. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's 1 Peter 1 uh, uh, in verse 3. Let me say that again. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy 
have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. See, see, when, when it says a lively hope, we learn that faith is the assurance of what is hoped for, right? So what he's saying is we, we have a living assurance by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's why we should never be pessimistic. We should always be optimistic. Somebody say, I should never be pessimistic. I should always be optimistic because as a child of God, I, I have a living hope living on the inside of me. I have a living assurance on the inside of me. Jesus Christ the Lord. Come on, somebody. With God on your side, it doesn't matter what's against you. With, with God on your side, I, like David said, you can leap over a wall and run through a tree. With, with God on your side, you understand that I'm more than a car. With, with God on your side, nothing can defeat you. I'm ready to make my last point, and I'm going to take my seat. I did pretty good this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm ready to make my last point. Understanding the resurrection and its significance gives you purpose and direction. Mark chapter 16, hallelujah, beginning with verse 12. He says, afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem unto the country. But that, 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 just stop right there real quick, son, and we'll go back. Stop right there. Because I, I, I didn't want to bring this part in, but I have to. You know, be, be, because we serve a risen Savior, right, at this moment, the disciples were actually doubting the fact that he rose from the dead. Amen. They, they, they didn't believe it. They, they were discouraged. They, they were distraught. Amen. And, and here in verse 12, it was afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. Amen. See, one of the things that I want you to focus on the fact that he appeared to them in a different form. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, we serve a risen Savior who's all-powerful. We serve a risen Savior who can who played a hand in creating the universe and us. And we got to stop trying to box God into our own understanding. Um, Y'all missed it right there. That's your shout, you see. see. See, some of us are missing it in this season uh, because he ain't coming the way you think he should come. See, we, we, we got too religious and too church-minded instead of kingdom-minded, amen? And God's saying in this day and time, I, I may come to you in a way you ain't expecting, huh? but you got to keep your faith level high because you might miss me thinking I'm coming this way, but, but I'm coming that way. Huh? The Bible says he appeared to them in a different form. We serve a living Savior who's all-powerful, and he can come to us the way he chooses. So stop trying to figure out how God going to do what he's going to do in your life and just trust the fact. Uh, that he's going to do it because uh, he said I would do it. He said all the promises of God uh, are yes and they are amen. I don't know who that was for. Listen, let's go, let's go. It says, it says they rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still he appeared, still later he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Okay, wait a minute. Can, can I, can, we wasn't there with him. But has God done anything in your life to let you know he's, a, he's alive? Has Jesus done anything for you to let you know he's living? So he's rebuking some of us this morning to say, why are you throwing in the towel? Why are you pulling out your hair? Didn't I bring you through before? If I brought you through before, what makes you think uh, I'm not going to bring you through now? The devil is a liar. We serve a risen Savior. And if he did it before, somebody say he'll do it again. Uh, Ty Tribute said that if he did it before, uh, he'll do it again. Uh, we serve a hard time God. Okay, I'm almost done. Y'all. Okay. And this is the good thing about God, right? This is the good thing about God, right? Wait a minute, because see, some of you have been complacent, those watching in the sanctuary. Some of you have been complacent because he hasn't come to you the way you think he should come. 
I, I, I'm telling you that God has come to you because he, but, but because he didn't come the way you think he should came, should have came, you missed him. Then you're mad with God because you're trying to understand God through your sensual perception instead of walking by faith. You only can hear God by faith and through faith. He's always communicating to your spirit, but he may come to you in a different way. Okay, The way he came and worked in somebody else's life, he may not work in your life. And because the two people, because the people came and testified that he was alive, the disciples were pissed off because he didn't come to them first. And because he didn't come to him first, them first, they didn't believe it. Okay, I'm trying to help y'all that. Y'all know we need to get out our own way. Say your name. Sometimes we need to get out our own way. Amen. Because, because he didn't come to you first and, and maybe maybe your breakthrough is coming from somebody you least expect. Huh? And because you're looking down on them and, and mad because he didn't come to you first, you're missing the very thing that can cause you to go to the next level. Somebody said, that's not going to be me in this season. Huh? I'm not boxing in my risen savior. Huh? This is the season of elevation. Huh? This is the season I'm taking that dream off the shelf. Huh? And I'm not going to box God into my stinking thinking. Huh? I'm going to keep walking by faith huh? and trusting God huh? so that I can be sensitive to the movement of God in my life. Okay, so, so after Minister Stephanie, Sister Cheyenne, after he rebuked them. See, one thing about God, he doesn't hold it against you. Huh? See, the devil trying to make you think huh, that you done messed up so bad huh, that it's all over with for you. Huh? The devil's trying to make you think huh, that you done did something and God done moved on from you because you had a faith failure. The disciples here had a faith failure. Jesus appeared to them and rebuked them. And after he rebuked them, the next thing he said to them, huh, what did he say to them? He said, go unto all the world. He said, and preach the good news to everyone. He said, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Then he said, these signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And they will, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Somebody say, understanding the importance of the resurrection and its significance. Give me purpose and direction. I stopped by to tell you this morning, the risen Savior is on the inside of you, telling you to go forward in your purpose. Go forward and fulfill your dreams. But he said, you must understand what I put in you is to advance the kingdom. It's not about you, your four and no more. I've anointed you to make a difference in civilization. I've anointed you to take back territory from the enemy. I've anointed you to seek and save that which is lost. I've anointed you to cast the devil out. Somebody say, I'm a devil slayer. My risen savior has purposed me to be a devil slayer, a snake handler. Can't nothing stop me because God is with me. I still got purpose even though I messed up. I still got purpose huh? even though I fell short. Huh? I still got purpose because huh? my risen Savior huh? told me to go huh? into all the world. Huh? Preach the gospel. Huh? Be who I called you to be. Huh? Pay no attention to the haters. Huh? You can take it. Huh? You can make it. Because huh? I'm with you. Huh? I'm on the inside of you. Can nothing overcome you. Can nothing stop you. Because on the third day, I rose up from the dead with all power and authority in my hands. And I gave it to you to go execute my will in the earth. Somebody touch themselves and say, I'm somebody in God because my risen Savior died for me shed his blood for me and on the third day he got up and said go the devil can't stop you the devil can't hold you you are my child greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world somebody put those blessed hands together give God praise give God honor give God glory Give him a resurrection praise. Put some praise emojis in the chat. I'm somebody because Jesus rose up from the dead. 
and gave me power. Hallelujah. The importance of the resurrection. The devil just don't want you to know it. But say, now I know it. He died for me. He cried for me. He bled for me. What the hell for me? Beat Satan up on his own territory. Then got up on the third day with all power. And said, now you go and finish the work. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap. The importance of the resurrection is that it shows us God's love for us. It shows us we're somebody. And it demonstrates to us that we have the ability in Christ to make a difference in the earth. So stop letting the devil hold you back of past mistakes, sins, and failures. Get all that out your head. Take neighbors covered in the blood. God ain't hold, he didn't hold it against the disciples. They walked with him. And he told them what was going to happen. And they still doubted. But after he said what he needed to say to them, he told them go. And that's the word to you today. God said this Resurrection Sunday does not just need to be some time we shout. God said it's time for you to go. So today was time for me to go forward. I'm not going back no more. I'm going forward in God. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, y'all, I want to thank you for tuning in and stopping by. Amen. The power of God is heavy in here. We're, we're just so excited for, uh, for what God is doing in the Impact Church. Amen. We thank God. Uh, uh, some of us are not here today, but we thank God for those of you who let the bishop know what was going on. We thank God for that. Amen. we just coming off this church fast, and, and God is honoring us. Amen. We're just so excited for what God is going to do in us and through us in this season. We're looking forward. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is our, what we call it, our reunion Sunday. Amen. We've talked to our original members of the New Vision Church. Uh, our members and our partners that were in Pennsylvania with us, and they all are excited to be here next Sunday morning to meet us. Amen. God told me I had some unfinished work, so I had to call, call them up and do some apologizing, do some praying, amen, do some crying, and uh, they are so excited, amen. They are, they are our family, y'all. They are our family. And so when me and Pastor went to Pennsylvania, you know, it hurt some of them. It did, because they were very connected to us. And so we just want them to know they can trust us. We back. We ain't going nowhere till the Lord call us home. We ain't going nowhere till the Lord call us home. Amen. And so we pray that the word was a blessing to you this morning and that the Lord inspired you where you needed to be inspired. Amen. Yes, son, say, baby. He came up for a reason. He just didn't come up to show you a pretty face. But he came up for a reason. Somebody say he came up for a reason. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all of you who uh, just showed a confidence. Hey, we got our Jamaican daughter. Hey, Kanisha, I have not heard from you in a while. We promise the next time we come to Jamaica on vacation, we're going to make sure we see you. God bless you, my spiritual daughter. We got Jamaica in the house this morning, y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord for all of you. Amen. Sister Toya, Aunt Diane, amen. Uh, Alicia, God bless you. Hey, our Mexico family. Sister Maria, God bless you. Amen. We'll be over, over the Cosmo real soon. God bless you. Blessings. Blessings. Amen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to give at the beginning of the service, the ways to do so are uh, on your screen. Amen. We just thank God for you. Amen. We believe in God's best for you. Let us uh, pray, receive the benefit. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word, and that your word fell on good ground and will produce a hundredfold in our lives. Now to him who is able to present you faultless in the presence of his glory, to the only wise God, our Savior, be both dominion, power, and might, both now and forever. I decree and declare you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. I decree and declare you are the head, not the tail, above only and never beneath. I decree and declare that whatever you place your hands to will continue to prosper as you walk in obedience to the word of God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you, God. 
Amen, amen. Give God one more Resurrection Sunday praise. I want you to enjoy your day. Go to all your Easter brunches and eat and do all those good things. Pass on our tire. We've been traveling a lot. We came back from uh, Virginia. Went to California, then had to go to Virginia. But your little brother made it worthwhile because he got all the write-ups and stuff down there. He's still down there playing. But I had, I had, I had to come home. We were tired. We weren't going to miss Sunday, huh? Yeah, they lost. Amen. So God bless everybody. We love you. We'll see everybody soon. God bless. Thank you.